Okay, uh, now we're going to get started. So I'd like to introduce uh, Anna Donahue, Encircle's Customer Education Manager. So she's been at Encircle for over five years. She knows the ins and outs of our app better than just about anyone. Um, and she's going to be doing the walkthrough of how to use the Encircle app for your contents documentation in the field. Also joining us today to give the real world contractor perspective is Asan Khan. Um, Asan is the co-owner of My Contents, based in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas. And My Contents is focused solely on contents restoration work, serving Texas and Oklahoma. Um, and his business has grown to over four million in revenue a year in just over uh, three short years since opening. Um, so today, Asan is going to share with you um, some of his tips and tricks on how his team uses Encircle in the day-to-day -day processes, um, and how he, how Encircle has contributed to their growth by building really trusted relationships with, uh, with, with adjusters, with other partners and other stakeholders in, in the restoration space. So welcome us on and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so before we jump into the training, we're just going to do a quick poll. Um, so you are going to see a poll pop up on the screen. Um, it's just gonna give us a, a quick pulse on who we've got joining us today and the type of contents restoration that's happening out there. Um, Asan, hopefully that gives you some context when you're sharing your, your expertise here. Yep. Okay, I'm going to disappear for a while and I will be um, handling the Q&A in the background um, and I'll, I'll pop back on at the end to throw some questions to you guys. All right, take it away, yeah. Anna. So before I dive right in, I just wanna run through our agenda uh, really quickly so you know what we're gonna be covering today. We're going to start uh, kind of at the beginning of the process. I'll show you guys how to do like your room overview stuff uh, in the mobile app. I'll show you how to inventory your items. That's kind of the big thing that most people usually want to get out of these trainings. So that's probably where we'll spend a good chunk of our time. Um, I'll talk a little bit about boxes and locations for uh, pack out purposes. Um, I'll show you how to run some reports from the field. I know that can be important to some of our users. Um, and then I'll finish off by showing you guys uh, using or how to use Encircle uh, web app for contents because you can manage contents uh, from the office. And I know a lot of people are doing a lot of that work uh, in the office as well. And so I want to make sure that we include that. And then as Leah mentioned, we'll, uh, we'll finish with a, a Q&A time. But I've got our, our job pulled up here. And so I mentioned that typically what you want to start with is a, a room overview. So for our training today, we're going to be working out of the living room. I've got the rest of the claim a little bit fleshed out, which will help us out a little bit later. Um, but let's go ahead and say that we're, we're going to start in the living room. Uh, so I've already got that room selected. I'm just going to tap on it to open it up. Now, I think it's a pretty important process, uh, pretty standard practice for most uh, contents users, even if you're not doing the mitigation, to start your walkthrough with your general uh, like room photos and, and notes about the structure itself. So before diving into inventory or when you're doing your walkthrough, in progress, right. uh, initially, uh, just you want to go ahead and start with uh, your room photos. So for that, you're going to tap the uh, little plus button there at the bottom. That's really what you want to use whenever you want to add anything to a room. You just want to tap that plus button. And I'm gonna start here with the add photos and videos option. It's gonna open up our camera. And then you probably already know this. You want, you're you probably gonna to wanna to get your uh, 360 degree uh, photos, you know, keeping the ceiling and the floor in view if you can. And just kind of taking uh, photos from left to right overlap so you get the whole room, you know, in view. Um, I think it's good to make sure that you're taking the photos in such a way that you can refer back to them later when you go to reset all the contents. That's another benefit of doing this up front. Um, a lot of people do also like to take a video as well that they use later on for doing their pack back. I'm not going to do that because it <laughs> it takes up too much bandwidth, I found out. Um, but you do have that video option down there uh, underneath the uh, little uh, camera eye, uh, button. Uh, so make sure that you are taking a good set of photos of the room. Make sure you're getting all the pictures or and or video that you are going to need later uh, for your reference. And then you want to tap done. 
Yeah, so um, another thing that you want to do as well, and um, Asan, I know would agree, is a big thing is, is documenting any pre-existing damage in the room. Uh, I'm sure many of you are already doing this today uh, to do this in the Encircle app. Uh, again, we're going to tap that red plus button there at the bottom. Now, I like to do this as a note. I think that's the best way to do it because then you can add a little bit of commentary. So I know I've got a few gouges and dings in my wall there behind the couch. I'm going to go ahead and, and throw those into a note. Um, I'm going to call it pre-existing damage. And that way you have a copy, the client has a copy, everybody has a copy um, of that information. And so you don't get into any awkward uh, conflicts later on. So I'll select... Yeah, if I may add, Anna, so what we generally use the initial walkthrough pictures for is to give the client an idea as well as the insurance adjuster carrier uh, an idea of, hey, what did it look like before we even went in there and started touching anything? Uh, the general photos are great. You know, we typically go from left to right. But one of the things that, you know, our mitigation partners always say, hey, I'm going to send you a Matterport. Will you go ahead and tell me what it's going to cost? And we tell them, hey, we really can't do that because we don't know what's under the bed. We don't know what's inside the cabinets, drawers, closets. So when we're doing the walkthrough pictures, we try to be as detailed as possible and try to capture as much as we can. You know, uh, for example, you know, you may have a china cabinet with a significant amount of uh, items in there that may take, you know, a day to pack out just because, you know, the delicate nature of what's in there. Uh, and then you open the bottom and it's double the amount that hasn't even been displayed. So you have to make sure that through the walkthrough, you're taking a lot of detailed pictures. Uh, and this is something that we'll reiterate throughout the, uh, the, the webinar is, you know, you don't get charged per picture. So I tell my guys, hey, take as many pictures as you can. Uh, it's better to take more pictures than not take enough pictures at all. Uh, you know, uh, this way, again, like you said earlier, it 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 validates what's there. It justifies it for the uh, the carrier and the adjuster. So that way we can show them, hey, uh, this was there. It needed to be backed out. And then, uh, you know, on the back end, it helps us start, you know, put everything back in once, uh, you know, when we do the back back. Yep. I appreciate that context, Asan. I think that's um, a really great practice that you guys have. Um, I know you also are doing uh, daily room photos as well every day on the job. Um, yeah. So, you know, it just depends on how we're billing for the job. Some jobs, if it's a, if it's a high end a client that, you know, a line item billing may not suffice just because we have to spend a lot of extra time. We build time and material. So in that situation, what we do is uh, and not just that every day we go to the job site, let's say it's a four day pack up in the morning before we start anything. We take general pictures. Right. Uh, of the entire space. And then when we leave for the day, we take general pictures one more time. Uh, what that does is, you know, it, everything is timestamped, right? So then it, it's redundancy to some extent. We have time logs, labor logs for employees, but then that also further validates for the, you know, uh, the homeowner, the adjuster that, hey, these guys were actually there. On top of that, you know, there are situations where the homeowner or someone else may have moved something or something got damaged. Uh, you know, we've, we've, ha we've had that situation as well. But what that does is allows us to, hey, look, when we left at this time, this was here. When we came back the next morning, it was gone or it wasn't damaged. Now it's damaged. And it happened uh, outside of the times that we were on site. So again, pictures, pictures, pictures. And this thing is, is crucial. This program in circle is crucial for us and has been. Absolutely. Um, and then um, before we kind of move on to the next thing, I, I'll finish showing you just how to add a note. Um, so I know Asan's team is, is making use of lots of pictures, lots of notes. Um, let's uh, add a quick pre-existing damage note to this room so you guys can kind of see how that works in the app. So I'm going to select add room note there. And you can input your own title if you want. We do have note templates, which can be pretty handy, something that you might want to do uh, in your company settings. And you can, you can set up uh, these templates that your team can use. So you might want to have things like pre-existing damage or any other like routine things that you guys like to document. And you can pre-fill it with uh, as, as much detail as you like here. Um, you see, I've got one for pre-existing damages. It's maybe a little, it's more for mitigation purposes than for content. So I may not use that one for this example. Um, but do make use of templates. I find they can actually be really handy. Uh, make sure that your team isn't missing any details that you normally like to capture. Um, but we'll go ahead and just put in a... a a title for this one. And I like to use speech to text for stuff like this. Pre-existing damage. 
some small gouges in the wall, some small gouges in the wall behind the sofa were there when we arrived on site. All right, and then I'll just add a couple pictures to my note here. You know, you don't want to be liable for this damage later on. I know some some clients will bring it up and will accuse your staff of creating these damages. So that's a nightmare that I'm sure probably most people sitting on this call have probably been before and don't want to have to do again. So you can see it's a pretty quick process in the app to capture those things. Um, so you want to make sure you're using, you make a generous use of, uh, of the photos and the notes there, even on your initial walkthrough, even before you've inventoried any items. And if I may add one other thing. So one other thing that we do during the walkthrough as well is, you know, so we handle mostly hard contents we, we do some specialty items as well but in a situation when you're in a you know high-end residence or you know you identify that there's you know electronics that need wire mapping or you need to bring in a partner for you know a grand piano what we'll also do during the walkthrough time is take pictures of those items as well uh you know take some detailed pictures of the grandfather clock of the piano any electronics that may need to go to a specialty vendor soft contents uh, you know, high-end artwork. So what that, what we can do once we get back, get back into the office is generate those reports, send it to your specialty partner. That way they, they're going in with, you know, being fully aware of what, you know, we're asking them to help us with. It'll manage your labor, it'll manage your time and whatnot. So uh, this is something that we started doing maybe the last uh, six to nine months. It, it's made the process so much better for our, our vendor partners. That way we can share with them, hey, look at this report. This is what we need your help with. And then it kind of goes from there. And then it keeps uh, the vendor partner from having to do their own walkthrough, right? So we try to stream, streamline the process as such. So when you're ready to start doing your inventory, um, you can stick uh, in, this, in the room and we're gonna go back and use that plus button again. But this time we're gonna select add contents. Mm -hmm. And here, let's start with a um, little pair of headphones I've got here. So it's gonna open up uh, your camera. And so the inventorying process is done uh, kind of with the camera in the forefront, which I think is a really uh, fast uh, way to do this, kind of the ideal way uh, to go through your inventory is um, by snapping photos um, or starting with the photos. And then afterwards you can add any details that you might need. So we'll just start with a like a general picture of our item. And now that my uh, photo is taken, I've got some options uh, showing up here, you know, down at the bottom of the screen. I want to go ahead and label these. So I'm going to click the edit details button there with the little pencil icon. And we've got quite a number of fields here, as you can see, that you can fill out. Um, let's just start with the item description. We're going to apply a disposition. This is really important. Uh, so a disposition is essentially a way to categorize or tag the item or, uh, you know, kind of tell the app like what the status is of it. So this is a customizable list. I'll show you later on where you can customize this in your company account settings on the web app. Um, but you want to set this up, uh, you know, per your own company's uh, process. Um, I liked Asan's disposition list, so I stole uh, several of his. And so let's just say maybe these these are undamaged. They're fine. They didn't. They weren't affected. I might save these as uh, like keep as is, for example. So, and do you mind going back to the disposition screen? I can share our thought process with that. So, what we the way we conduct our business and we present it to the adjuster and the homeowner is depending on the type of loss, we will do what's called a salvageability assessment on all the contents that are impacted. Right. Uh, May not be applicable if it's just a, you know, a uh, cat one, cat two possible loss where you're just doing a pack out. There's no cleaning involved, right? For that, most of it's going to be keep as is. We're simply just removing the content storing while they redo the floors. But in a situation where, you know, it's cat two where, you know, the uh, water's been sitting for a while, cat three, fire loss, uh, any special circumstances. So in that situation, what we do is 
while we're inventorying everything, we will disposition the content. So that way, once it's, so that way it gets packed appropriately. And then once it arrives at our facility, it gets moved to the proper areas to where it's handled as such. And then, you know, it'll be stored in our balls and racks. So in this situation, we use cap is, keep as is as contents that were not impacted whatsoever. Okay. And then the next disposition is restore, but restore clean or restore refinish. Difference for us is restore clean is, hey, uh, you know, water was dripping on some plates. We need to make sure th those are clean uh, or, you know, uh, you know, piece of furniture was sitting in water. Uh, for a period of time, there was no physical damage to the furniture. It just needs to be cleaned with antimicrobial and then, you know, uh, stored. But in a situation where a physical, the uh, the item is damaged, you know, physical damage where, you know, water was sitting for so long that, uh, you know, the, the paint came off or the stain faded, you know, you have to go in and, you know, refinish that item and that such, then we just position it with, uh, you know, refinish. We use other as well. That's if our field techs or supervisors on site cannot make the call. What we do is we disposition as other. So when it comes back to our facility, we'll re-examine it to see, hey, what do we need to do? Uh, stay uh, in like a, you know, in a, in a situation where it's, uh, you know, simple pack out, you know, any personal items, uh, you know, uh, prescription drugs, chemicals, you know, perishables. Uh, we pack those for the client, but we keep them in a the stay box and keep them on site with the client. Uh, you know, we don't know how long we're going to store, uh, you know, maybe six months or a year, and we don't want food getting run in, in, in the vaults, right? So we have to be cognizant of that. Uh, and then obviously non-restorable total loss. Uh, should the determination be made, then you disposition as such. And then whether you have a disposal authorization, we'll dispose of it then, or we take it to our facility, hold it until we get a disposal authorization executed, and then we'll move from there. So, yeah. And again, these are... Uh, you know, can be changed, uh, they're customizable. So what may work for us may not work for you guys, uh, but you guys can, you know, change this to whatever works best for you and your team. So uh, that's yeah. been great for us. Definitely don't skip this uh, in your company settings for sure, because um, it will make the documentation much better. Um, so let's say we're gonna keep these headphones as is, maybe they're not damaged. So I'll just mark them as keep as is. Um, now, if you're packing the item out, you're also going to want to put it in a box. Uh, and so, and, a one last, and I give you one last point. So the other good thing about the disposition is, is whenever you're creating the reports for the adjuster, the homeowner, let's say you have 40 items that you disposition that needs to be clean. Well, you can go generate a report for clean items, and then you can send that over to the adjuster or the homeowner. That way, uh, you know, the more work you do up front, the less you do on the back end. So. Uh, you know, you can use all the information that you put in to create reports later on, and we'll touch on that. I just wanted to make sure I address that. Yeah, very true. Uh, very correct. So, um, so yeah, so with the boxes, like if you're going to be packing items out, this is this is where you're going to be basically documenting your pack out here is through our box function. So I'm going to click the box name button, and it's going to start a list of boxes. And it just numbers them one to you know whatever. Uh, now, what you should do instead of just using the numbers is you should be throwing a prefix uh, in front of your uh, box number. Typically, like the name of the room, probably, or some people will use like the initials of the person who packed it out. Let's call this living room box one. And then you'll see it'll kind of auto generate a list of box numbers for me. So I'll just select living room one. You can also uh, assign a box type. And this is another customizable list that you shouldn't skip in your company account settings. And Asan, I may throw it to you here in a second if you want to kind of give us a little bit of uh, background on, on your list. I, I stole a bunch of yours too. Um, I think our, our, you know, our default ones are like small, medium, large, wardrobe and st stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'll mark this one as a small box. Um, but again, make sure you're customizing this. Uh, to your process, to, you know, the way you guys charge out uh, so that the app will keep track as you go along of, you know, how many small boxes, how many wardrobe boxes and so on. So it does help keep track of that stuff for you for billing purposes. So you want to make sure you're utilizing uh, this feature for sure. Um, yeah, the great thing about this is at the end, uh, you can create reports that'll so show you how many unboxed items you had, how many small boxes, medium boxes, wardrobe boxes, mattress boxes, that were used and it simplifies it for you and gets that uh, 
report generated on the back end. Uh, so our rule here essentially is we typically use small boxes majority of the time. Uh, the idea behind that is the small boxes are the strongest boxes. And there may be a situation where it's a very valuable item that only one item may be in the box, right? Uh, also, what it does is it's easier to, uh, you know, kind of maneuver around at the, at, at, the, at the residence or the place of business that you're backing out, you know, in your box trucks and back into your facility, right? Uh, you know, I've seen some, uh, you know, pack out companies that use large boxes for heavy items. That's, that's a big no-no, right? Uh, large boxes are typically for pillows and throws and blankets, things that don't have much weight. Um, unboxed items are going to be your items like your couches, your, your, your chairs, things that you cannot place into an item, uh, into a box. Right. Uh, you know, and then the other thing is it depends if you're doing uh, program work or you're not doing program work, uh, with program work, you have to get certain approvals to use, you know, let's say a dish pack or a picture box or a lamp box. Right. So you just got to be cognizant of that, but this helps you kind of keep that, uh, you know, in, uh, in perspective. One box that I see a lot of people not using is kind of like a catch all box at the end of the pack out. When you have a bunch of knickknacks sitting around, some brooms, some, some random things that you really can't box. We use what's called a gondola or a mover's box. It's, it's, it's probably three to four times thicker than a regular box. And it's a significantly large size. So what we use that for is, you know, items that, you know, is essentially a catch all at the end of the job. So, uh, but yeah, so again, the purpose of the box count, uh, the box type is to, it generates the reports on the back end for you and it helps you, you know, uh, maintain costs. And, you know, if you sent your guys out with 200 boxes, only packed 150 and didn't come back with the extra 50, you know, you guys can, you know, figure that out. But uh, the idea is for, for billing at the end of the day, you know, Hey, these are, these are what been packed and whatnot and the ease of generating the, the reports. So. Yep. I appreciate that extra context, Asan. I think that's really good insight. Um, we'll mark this one as a small box for now. And you can add as many of these other details as you like. Um, for this item, I'm just going to go ahead and click Save. All right. But now I've noticed that uh, we've got some damage there on the headband, right? So that's some pre-existing damage that I want to document. Um, so that's another big thing on your inventories is same as we did with the structure. We want to document any important pre-existing damages on the items. And so for that, you want to use uh, the notes function here. And you can add as many notes to your items as you like. I'm going to add a photo note uh, for this. Any pre-existing damage, obviously you want a photo note as opposed to text. And we'll call this uh, pre-existing damage. And while you do that, I'm going to answer a question that Donna had. Donna asked, uh, are box counted per room or total per pack out? It can be either option. So you can have the report generated for the room or you can have it generated for uh, the entire pack out as a whole. Uh, sounds like you do a lot of work for Allstate. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of Encircle. You can customize any reports to uh, you know whatever whatever you need essentially at the end of the day, whether it's for you, the adjuster or the homeowner. So that's the great thing about Encircle. Yeah, and we'll show you later on when we cover reports, how to run that, um, that box report. All right, so that is a very well-documented item there. Um, let's move on to the next one, all right? So for that, when you're ready to start uh, your next item, uh, you just wanna click that add button. All right, maybe I've got another quick item that I can add that's you know uh, unaffected. All right, so I'll just add, add this mouse pad. And this can go very quick, especially for these unaffected items. You know, it doesn't have to take long to do these. You can bang them out pretty quick. I wanted to point out. Um, there we go. Just want to point out here that you'll notice my box and my disposition are the same as my last item. That's actually a setting called sticky disposition. It's something you can turn on and off in your web app settings. Uh, I recommend that you keep it on because if you're, you know, packing out one box after another and you're putting multiple items in the box, you don't necessarily necessarily want to stop and update the box number and disposition for every individual item. 
Um, so the app will remember the last item and apply the same box and disposition to the next one. And then when you're ready to switch boxes or assign a different disposition, uh, you can do that really easily. And I'll show you how to do that on our next item. So let's say, hey, Anna, uh, Diana, uh, and I'm just going to jump in um, and just give you a quick time check. It's 1230. So I just want to make sure that we're um, getting everything in that you need to get in. Right. Okay. We'll do, we'll just do this one last item then, um, okay. which is a lot. Um, Asan, while Anna is, is documenting the items, um, Anthony just asked a question about why wouldn't you combine the headphones and iPad into the same photo to help save time? Well, here's the thing. If it's, let's say you open the junk drawer, right? And there's like 200 items in there. In that situation, we would just do one item and take multiple pictures of it. But in a situation where it's an iPad and a headphone, that's two high dollar items, you wanna ensure you capture it individually and then you take detailed pictures of each one to ensure that there's no pre-existing damage. Because at the end of the day, if it's damaged uh, or the client, you know, the client is saying that it is damaged, you have significant amount of reporting uh, and pictures to where you, know, you, you can justify saying, hey, look, it wasn't us, right? So I, I like I said earlier, I tell my guys, look, I'd rather you guys spend another 30 minutes on a job site taking an additional 500 pictures than coming back with not enough pictures. Now I got to buy someone an iPad or uh, a headphone when I could have, you know, it could have easily been captured, you know? So in some situations for smaller ticket items, like I said, open up a junk drawer, there's 50 pens in there, rubber bands, nail clippers. That's not a big deal, especially if you're not cleaning it, right? You can take some general pictures, but Anything that's of any type of value, you definitely want to do them uh, one off and then take as many pictures of it in the picture notes to ensure that you capture all the pre-existing damage. Uh, you know, we have really good clients and sometimes we may have that one or two not so good client that may want you to replace it. But if you have pictures to justify it, then you won't have that issue. And we've had that situation, you know, hey, it's on, uh, you know, this, this, this thing has a huge scratch on it. You know, it wasn't there before. Okay, well, let's pull up our packout report and pull up our timestamp pictures. Uh, Ms. Smith, you know, the day of the packout, before we packed this, the, this scratch was already pre-existing. Oh, okay, Asan, sorry, I forgot. Or another situation where, hey, Asan, the scratch is there. We look at the packout pictures and it's not there. We did the damage. So then we, we own up to it and we, we, we uh, replace that for the client. So at the end of the day, the more pictures you take, the better it is because it's, you know, essentially it's CYA, right? Uh, and it protects you and the company, uh, you know, and you want to create good habits, right? If you get, if we get sloppy on iPad and, uh, you know, headphone, they may have a, you know, a large $5,000 TV that they may not take good pictures of. And then you may be stuck with covering that cost. So uh, at all times, I would recommend take uh, a lot of pictures. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so the, the last thing I wanted to add here really quickly before I move on to the next is I did want to point out, I think it's important is the serial number function as well. Like you can take a separate photo for the serial number, much like I have here for this laptop. So any like higher end, like especially electronics, I think this is an important thing to include. Yeah, this is important, especially if you're doing uh, any type of cleaning of the electronics or total loss. Uh, if you make an attempt to clean and then it's not restorable, uh, then you're going to have to total loss it. And this provides you with the, enough information to, uh, you know, know what model serial number it is so that we can replace it with a, you know, similar item. Yep. So make sure your staff are uh, remembering to uh, to take this info down and you can also input the serial number and model number in there under the item details too. I'm just going to click save. And then just because we got to move on to the next thing, I'm going to wrap this portion up, right? So I'm just going to click done. And uh, our contents here that we have. If you need to go back in and edit an item, you can always do that. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, boxes and locations. We kind of talked about boxes a bit already. Um, I just wanted to point out in the app, there is a tab specifically if you want to get like a bird's eye view of the boxes on the job, you can click uh, these three bars there at the top right corner of the page. And you can select boxes. 
So this is going to show me like all of my unboxed items that I have so far and each of my boxes on the job along with what's in them, right? You can use the jump to box uh, button as basically a, a search function for an, a box number. Uh, you can also filter this page by room if you want to see, you know, which boxes came from the living room and so on. Uh, you can do that. Uh, you'll find a handy uh, search button there at the bottom of the app, which I think is a, a really useful feature, especially after you've like put everything away. Uh, you can always just come and search for an item. Let's say the customer asks about, you know, their headphones, for example. You can search the item, click view item, right? You can see, you know, which box it's in, living room one. That'll help you track down stuff if you have to go and pull it out of storage later on. And so, like I said, this page is just a, a good way to kind of see all the boxes on the job, see what's going on. You can come in here, rename boxes and things like that if you like. Um, so peruse this page once you've got a job going. Um, I think there's some nice little uh, functions on this page. The other thing that I wanted to point out too is the locations feature. So in NCircle, we have this function called locations. It's exactly what it sounds like. So again, I'm gonna tap these three bars at the top right and I'll go to the locations page. <clears throat> and this is usually like vaults, pods, uh, storage facilities, cleaning facilities. It's basically just a way, <clears throat> excuse me, to track the movement of your boxes <clears throat> throughout different physical locations. So um, I've already got a vault one set up that I set up earlier this morning for some of my boxes from the kitchen. Let's go ahead and create another location. So maybe we have another box where some of this uh, other stuff from the claim is going into. I'll click create location. I'll call this vault two. And then I'll click select boxes. And maybe I'll just take the ones from the living room that I did. And again, that'll be really handy too. If, if some you know client calls you a month after your pack out, you use the search function to search an item. You can always go find out which box and specifically which location it's in. Um, so this uh, can be a useful function as well, uh, just to keep track of stuff as it's moving about your warehouse or wherever it's being stored on site in a storage pod or something like that. And you can also uh, search locations and find uh, you know, individual boxes on this tab too. Um, Asan, I don't know if you have anything you wanted to add here about, you know, boxes or locations that we haven't covered. No, I think we've, we've spent a good amount of time on the boxes, so we should be good. And again, if you guys have questions, please ask and we can hit them at the end for sure. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is reports. And we'll start in the, the mobile app and then we'll jump to the web app. Uh, but you can run reports here. Um, and some of you may already be familiar with that function, so I won't belabor the point too much, but under the documents section of the claim, when you're ready to pull a report, you can click generate report. We have PDF and Excel reports. I know Asan uses both, like he'll often use our InCircle PDF report for his walkthrough reports, um, and he'll share that with the client uh, pretty much as soon as possible. Um, so for that, you'd go under the PDF report option, you choose the InCircle PDF report, um, you probably want to include everything from the claim in that report. Give it a title. Can go through all the other options here. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. You probably want to deselect the psychrometrics option, right? So yeah, through... since we're not yeah, since we're not doing any of the drying and stuff, it may be applicable for those that are doing mitigation and contents. You know, you want to create one sexy report, you can do that. But for content specific, we we remove that because we don't need the extra 10 pages that gets added with no information on it. Hey, uh, the other great thing about the uh, documents side as well that we use a lot is you can actually upload your contracts. Uh, you send it to the contracts team within Circle. And what they'll do is they'll upload your work authorizations, your actual contracts. Uh, for us, a few things that we use is, hey, we completed the pack out. So we have a uh, completion, a certificate of completion. We have disposal authorizations on there. Uh, if we do know that we're going to have contents that need to be disposed of, we also have a uh, release of liability, uh, you know, in a situation where 
that Mr. Klein, if we leave this for another day, it's going to be covered in mold. And the client is insistent, no, I want you to leave it. Then you, you know, you, you record that on there saying, Hey, look, uh, we advise them that this is something that needs to be disposed of. They didn't want it. We just, we just need to capture that. So if there's any issues down the road, you are protected. So, uh, Again, you know, I think it takes a few days for uh, Encircle to take your uh, um, take your forms and upload into the system. And the cool thing about it is it will be generated like she's showing you. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like DocuSign. And you generate it right then and there, turn around, and uh, uh, the client can sign it right there for you. So. Yep. That's an right important. There. Just like that. So make sure you're sending us your forms if you haven't already. Um, we do also have some Excel reports which can, are kind of your way to do your contents listings. I'll show you that in the web app. It's a little bit easier. It looks easier on the web app uh, or it looks yep. better on the web app than on the phone. All right, so I've got the claim here on uh, my computer. Um, before I jump into the reports, I wanted to show uh, a couple quick things just for managing contents. Uh, if you go into the spreadsheet tab, that's my favorite personally for like, if you're planning on working with the contents on the computer, um, I like the spreadsheet view because it lays out all of your contents in um, a spreadsheet format. And you can come here and add any extra detail that you want. Um, you can do it right from the spreadsheet view if you want. Just kind of click in the description of the item. You can pull up a photo. You can, you know, type right in any of the cells. You can also click the uh, little edit button off to the side. And then you've got like a little bit, like a bigger picture to work with. And you can you know, update any fields, add any notes. Um, I did notice that about 30% of you are, are doing replacement pricing. So I could talk about that really briefly. We have, if you're using Google Chrome, we have a pricing extension that uh, will help you with the item pricing. Um, you can click price using, you can go to like specific retailers or you can go to uh, like Google or Amazon. For me, best right. practice on this, Anna, is gonna be just go start with Google. And then it'll kind of guide you on which way to go. Sometimes like your general household items, you know, it may be $2 for ranch at Walmart, but Amazon's selling it for $14, right? Let, let's be reasonable here too, you know? If you're doing a fire loss where you have to do 4,000 household items, you got to be practical in that situation where they can get it for $2 at Walmart, not 14 at Amazon, so. Yeah, and so when you find uh, the price on the item, it'll be highlighted in yellow. And so you just can click that that price there, right? So I'll just click this one because for some, there we go. All right, so it'll bookmark this for you and it'll go into the report when you give this over to the client, to the adjuster, that this is uh, where you source that pricing. You can even save multiple replacements if you want to show like a range of prices, right? So this can be a handy uh, function for those of you who are, you know, doing that service for your clients that are doing the pricing, make sure that you are utilizing this function. Um, yeah. right. That's how you can edit the items. Um, you can also kind of filter the page here. So, you know, if you had a, num a number of items that you marked as, you know, maybe they need to be assessed or something like that. I think it's handy to be able to filter this page by like disposition. Maybe I want to pull up all those items that I said were, you know, needed assessment. All right, so you filter this page based on disposition. I think that's one useful view as well. All right, so let's let's turn to talking about reports here because that's probably the second most important thing to a lot of people sitting on here besides learning how to inventory. So I'm gonna go over to the overview tab and the process is very similar to the mobile app. I'm gonna find the document section. I'm gonna click generate report. And this time let's try an Excel report. And you can run this report, like Asan was mentioning earlier, one of the useful things you can do, like if it's a schedule of loss, for example, you can filter it like by disposition, right? So if you're gonna do a schedule of loss, you can pick your total loss or non-restorable items, and then the report will just pull those. Or if you had like specialty items that you wanted to send um, to one of your uh, vendors or something, you can also, uh, you know, pull, pull those. For now, I'm just gonna choose all my items and then we have a, a number of report templates. Um, yours won't look this big because these are all of our specific carrier reports that I have on my training claim. Um, we've got several uh, popular ones here. 
um, like, and you can run them all at once if you like. I'm just gonna give this a title and it's really that simple. All you have to do is input a title and then run whichever reports that you're gonna be running. And then click generate. So it might take maybe up to a couple of minutes or so to run a report. If you got a lot of contents items, maybe like 10 minutes or something, right? So in the parentheses there, it'll show me like which template I use. So one of our, probably one of our more popular reports is this one called the Encircle Detailed Spreadsheet. This is good for just creating like a general like contents inventory. If you just want to create like a listing, it'll have uh, all the detail you need, um, which room it came from, box number, location, there's a thumbnail image that if the recipient clicks on the thumbnail, they can go view the full picture. Um, it will have the text notes. It's not gonna include the photos from the photo notes because that would make the file too big. Um, so if you wanna make sure that they get a copy of all the like pre-existing damage photos, send them a PDF report as well. All right, so this is like your general contents listing, kind of a good all-purpose report. And then we have uh, the schedule of loss as well. This is broken down uh, by room. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can give this to an adjuster and they can work right out of it. Like they can open this in Excel and if they are gonna be adding pricing and other info, it just makes it really easy for them, makes you look like a rock star to share something like this with them. Um, so people like to use that one a lot as well. Um, I know Asan uses our exact contents compatible report. Um, and so just so you know, this is a, a useful report. You can just download it import it right into exact contents and it will uh, add uh, your items into exact contents for you. And then uh, we also talked a little bit earlier about what we called the box report. Um, when we were talking about how the app keeps track of your boxes, um, we have a box summary that's gonna pull all that information into a report for you. So it, it is broken down by room and you can see a total of all the different types of boxes that you use. So that's why it's important you know, to keep track of your boxes. And this report can help, you know, make your, your billing process that much simpler. So that was like a very quick run through of the reports. Um, like I said, we have a number of uh, Excel or, or carrier reports that are specific to certain carriers. I know the, like the Allstate um, and uh, State Farm ones are, are popular. Um, if you guys, are interested in putting any of these on your accounts, just let us know. We can add them to your account for free. Um, Anna, how would somebody go about uh, reaching out to us to let it, to have them added to our account? Uh, probably just reach out to support at encircleapp.com. These are, like I said, they're free. So we'll put them on your account for you. Hey, Anna, will you click the initial walkthrough report so they can see what that looks like? Mm -hmm. So again, this is customizable for what, you know, however format you want, right? And it's pretty cool because it'll also break down for each room, uh, you know, the overall photos, uh, you know, the disposition of contents. And the cool thing is, is these pictures don't seem that large here. But what you can do is you can actually click on the picture and it takes you to a separate, and then you can zoom in and look at any details as 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 you can, right? So it, it, makes, it, it makes it so user-friendly. And the cool thing about it is, you can send these reports directly through in circle. So that way it doesn't uh, make you put it on your cloud. And sometimes adjusters can't, you know, through their firewalls access large reports. Because sometimes like fire reports that we generate are two, 3,000 pages. And so it's easier if you just click that mail and then you send it to the homeowner, you send it to the insurer, you send it to the adjuster directly. Um, and it makes it so much easier. Uh, so, and then even for the homeowner, it doesn't make them download anything. What it does is it pulls it up into the encircle. In, in uh, I don't know the technical side, but it pulls it up on a web page, and you can take a look at it on a browser. But if you want to download it, you definitely can. So again, the user the, the user platform, the uh, you know the friendliness on this, it, it's it's significant. You know, again, also the customization. Yeah. So I think that probably does it for our spiel. I think we need to address questions now. Yeah. So. <laughs> There's been lots of questions coming in. Um, actually, well, there's there's a mix of questions. And I, I created a poll while you guys were going through this because I think um, what's been really obvious to me during the session is there's a, a big appetite for going through our contents feature in detail. Um, 
probably more so than we can get through in an hour in a way that will serve everyone. But there's also a big appetite for learning from your peers. Um, Asan, I think you're uh, you're really popular and people want to know how you're doing things and, and what your tips and tricks are in the field. So I just want to launch a quick poll. Um, and honestly, I just came <laughs> just came up with this idea on the fly. So um, just want to ask the audience, um, if and circle were to host, um, would would the folks who are here be interested in attending smaller workshops where you could so, sort of show and tell, share and learn from your peers? Um, again, our, our marketing team might might kill me for asking this question, but I just I feel like it, there's an appetite for learning from one another. Um, and um, overwhelming, the, you overwhelming, know, there's always yes. <laughs> There's always innovation in the you know mitigation side and the reconstruction build back side, but there hasn't been much going on on the content side. And I think there's a huge void there. So yeah. even for us, you know, I have, you know, larger companies that reach out to us, ask us how we've done what we've done in such a short period of time. And, you know, one of the, the biggest thing that I'll attribute to is in circle, you know, and, you know, obviously doing the right by, you know, doing right by clients, right at the end of the day. But Encircle has allowed us to make sure what we're doing on the job site uh, can be translated to on the back end. And one, we get paid. And two, we're doing the right stuff for the client, you know, and everything is captured. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. We will definitely not get through all of the questions that were asked today. Um, so I have a few takeaways. Um, definitely, there's a lot of interest in doing some smaller workshops. Um, so stay tuned. We will likely um, look to offer those in the in the months to come. Um, one of our CS the customer success managers has been in the chat and he's collecting email address to email addresses to get those schedule or those carrier reports out to the people that are interested. Um, so we'll follow up on those. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of questions. So I, I imagine we'll we'll be reaching out to those if we don't get to your to answer your question. We will we'll be on top of those. Your customer success manager will reach out to you, um, or um, somebody from our sales team will reach out to you if you're not currently an Encircle customer. So I'm going to jump into the Q and A, um, and we've got about eight minutes. Um, the first question, Asan, is going to be for you. How long does it take to itemize contents? Our techs keep taking photos and listing off-site, which I feel takes longer as opposed to doing it all on-site? So the one thing with that I, I will say is all my employees are cross-trained. So the ladies that do the packing can move, the, the guys that are moving, the large items can do the packing and the inventory. Everyone has access to Encircle. So some, some companies, the way they do it is they'll have one person there doing all the uh, Encircle inventory or whatever, and then you have three, four people on the back end or temps packing. We don't operate that way. What we do is we send in a crew and everyone is doing the uh, entire assessment, the salvageability assessment, dispositioning everything, and then they pack it. It creates such significant efficiencies. The other thing is uh, we have them do it right then and there because if they leave and then you know they go back to the facility, there's going to be 50 other things for them to do. They may not be able to come and, you know, redisposition them and may forget notes or whatnot. So anytime we, we, we go out to a job site, we make sure that they're doing it there and not later, you know. Um, and we and the idea behind content is different than the structure, right? You have to take your time. You know, obviously give them, hey, this needs to be an eight-hour pack out. It shouldn't take longer. But if it takes them eight hours, 30 minutes, and they're doing a great job capturing everything, it's a win, you know. Uh, so uh, I think it goes with just take as many pictures as you can just position right then and there. So that way you don't have any issues or nothing falls through the cracks later on. So, uh, you know, it, it may take another minute or two per box, but it's, it's well worth it. Okay, thank you. There was a quite a few questions that came in both in the Q and a and in the chat as well around um, labeling boxes. And I think that um, in the contents management space, there's sort of two camps of QR codes and, um, barcode scanning and printing um, and then having, you know, using a Sharpie. So sort of two, two questions for you, Asan. Um, the first one is um, how are you, how is your team labeling boxes? Is it just, with, you know, Sharpie on the side of the box? Um, and then secondly, um, what are your thoughts on implementing like QR code scanning or, or, or barcode scanning into, into the process? For us, simplifying the process has been key. 
Uh, less is more sometimes. Uh, we have worked with other restoration companies that would barcode. Uh, that just slows you down. It creates a bottleneck. This is what we use. Let me see if you guys can see it. These are, you can pick these up from anywhere. I can share a link with you. But essentially, it's just a label. Let me take this off. It's just a label we stick on unbox items, okay? You put on, um, you know, the room name and the, box, the, the item number. That's it. So let's say it's your dining room, your fourth share. Dining room, item 12, you know, and that's it. And then it gets logged into Encircle as such. So there's no, you know, misplacing it. There's, you know, uh, there's, there's nothing this doesn't do that a barcode does. So you can use barcodes. I have nothing against barcodes. This process has worked well for us. Uh, I and I, I think Lee had mentioned that there there may be some background looking at adding barcodes. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. uh, that's entirely up to you and how sophisticated you want the process to be. But you don't need the barcodes to have all the sophisticated reporting on the back end. It can be done without barcodes. So again, less is more. We do it as simple as possible. And uh, you know the printer may break. You may forget the printer. You run out of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the rolls to print on, you know, there may be a lot of issues. You may not have electricity on site. Uh, so how are you going to plug in that, you know, heat printer and stuff like that? So those are some issues that can be mitigated by just having a bunch of these tags. So. Okay. Uh, we probably have time for one or two more questions. Um, there was some questions that have come in around um, pricing and AI and, and automatic labeling and, and, and things like that. So I just want to address that. These are things that we're looking into um, on our product team um, as part of um, innovating in our in the in the contents app. As Asan said, there's a lot of opportunities to innovate in technology and content. So, um, if you have feedback um, on things that you'd like to see, there is a survey at the end of this um, at this at the end of this webinar um, where you can add those add those ideas. And if you have additional ones or you'd like to speak to someone on our product team. Um, just send an email to product at ncircleapp.com and a product manager would love to jump on a call um, and, and sh get your insights and experience. Um, Anna, there's uh, probably time for one last question and Jason has been waiting patiently since the very beginning to have this question answered. Um, so I'm just going to just read it over on my other screen. Um, when uploading reports, is there a way to resequence numbers of pictures? What I'm finding is happening is we do reports on files and say, I need a non-restorable item list. And I had had many people documenting all at the same time. And when I go and upload those reports, um, it does not generate a report with numbers in sequence. Is there a way to make sure the numbers are in sequence and no num missing numbers on these reports? So one way we, so there may be three or four different techs working in one room, right? So what we do is, uh, the first tech will start from one. Tech number two will start from 101. Tech three, 201. Tech four, 401. This way, you know, there's no duplication of the box numbers. There's no duplication of item numbers. And it'll, it'll solve the problem that you're having. Uh, but the thing is, it doesn't matter. You know, let's say you only did, you know, a total of 80 boxes. They'll still give you 80 boxes total, but your numbers are just going to be, you know, uh, one to 40 and then 100 to 123 or whatever, right? So uh, uh, the box number itself to identify it may be different, but the box count won't be impacted. I hope that answers that question. Anna, do you have anything to add as well? Well, I think Jason might actually be talking about the item numbers themselves, which is just a an automatic thing that the app does. Like the first item you add, it will call it number one. The second item you add, it'll call it number two. Um, so we don't currently have a way to uh, change the numbers. Um, however, you can reorder the items if you go into the spreadsheet view. And I think that will change the order in which they appear in your reports. So that might be the answer to your question, Jason. I think it would be good for me and you to connect offline just so I can make sure I understand your question and, and we get it answered. So Leah, if you can get me Jason's info. Yeah, um, we've got, we've got, it'll all be recorded. Hopefully this might answer, like serve the quick answer anyways. All right, so we are, we're at time. So Anna, if you could jump back to the slides, um, we'll just wrap up. Um, and I appreciate all of the questions that came in and I apologize that we haven't been able to, to answer them all, but it just tells us that this, this is a great, um, 
a, a great opportunity to, to learn from Encircle, to learn from customers like Asan, um, and that there's an appetite for learning more about content. So we will be hosting more of these sessions. Um, if you want to learn um, without without us being live, you can check out Encircle University. Um, so the whole platform is up on there. Anna has created some wonderful um, training um, or educational lessons on each part of the Encircle platform. You can go at your own pace. You can get your whole team in there. Um, you can also earn um, IICRC credits. Um, we have about 15 plus IICRC credits available um, through Encircle U. Um, so definitely get in there if you're an Encircle customer and just email support at encircleapp.com and we can get you signed up with that and get you um, on the contents training in there. Um, the next question, um, we are hosting a contents bootcamp um, with Barb Jackson and, um, and our own certified restorer, Chris Rosnowski for a four hour deep dive into everything contents for restoration businesses. So it's not Encircle contents training. It is more what we were talking about before, which is that sort of learn from the experts how to do things in the field, best practices, but not Encircle training. We will be hosting more Encircle trainings in the future. Um, but this one, if you're interested, um, you can scan the QR code and register for this one. Um, there are four IICRC credits available. So this one is, um, is it eligible for credits? Um, and that's March 28th from 12 to four. So certainly check that one out. Um, and we are always putting out a whole lot of content. Um, we try our best to put, be providing restorers with really valuable content, webinars, um, articles, insights, product updates, all of that stuff. So um, we do put out a newsletter. Um, so I encourage you to subscribe to that newsletter so you don't miss out on anything that's upcoming. Um, so again, scan that QR code and, um, and sign up for our newsletter so you don't miss out. That is it. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. As I mentioned earlier, there is a short survey at the end of this webinar. Um, we really appreciate your feedback um, and to make these sessions um, better and more valuable going forward. Um, and also there's an opportunity to provide some Encircle product feedback in there as well. So thank you so much. Um, have a great rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thanks, Hassan. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye, everyone.